Hi folks, in this lesson we're going to see how easy it is to create a tabbed interface using Angular Material. Tabs are a very common UI device for simplifying a complex layout when there is a lot of content to display. Instead of presenting all of the content at once, we can hide some of it away in different tabs and the visitor chooses when or even if to display it. So first of all, let's create a new component to host the tabs on. And let's also set up the routing for this new component quickly. And we should probably add a link to the navigation menu once again. And now we should be able to get to the new tabs component from the navigation menu without any issues. Okay, so let's get started with the material tabs component itself. In order to use this component, we need to import it into our module. And once that's done, we can then create a basic set of tabs using the mat-tab-group directive. Let's use a mat card for layout once again. So the outer container for the tabs component is this mat-tab-group. And inside that, we can add individual tabs using the mat-tab custom element. And let's add a few more. One thing to note at this stage is that we've used the label input property for each tab to give the tab a tab label. Let's take a look in the browser. So we can see our tabs along the top here and there are the tab labels that we specified. And we can switch between the tabs by clicking on the label. And each tab is shown or hidden with this nice animation. And it all looks really nice and just works really well out of the box. The tab titles are muted slightly compared to the tab content panels and the active tab has this blue underline as a selected state. And let's just make the browser window smaller. And we can see that we now get some additional UI when the browser is in a, a state where it's too small to display all of the tabs. We get this tab navigation and we can use that to show different tabs or go back to some of the earlier ones. And again, that's all completely built in, completely out of the box. We don't need to configure or style that in any way. And it all just works really well together. So the tabs component gives us a lot of default functionality for very little effort, but it's also highly configurable and it has quite a large API. So the labels that we currently have are just plain text, and this might be enough for common tab scenarios, but what if we want the tab titles to be richer and contain markup? For that, we can use the mat-tab-label directive. So for tab one, let's remove the label input property. And now we need to use an ng-template once again for the tab label. And we just add the mat-tab-label directive to the template. So now the markup that we want to use for the tab label can be added inside the template. Now back in the browser, we can see that the emphasis has been placed on the first tab. And that's how we can use rich markup instead of just plain text for the tab titles. So this gives us much more control and flexibility with the tab titles. There's also another directive that we can use with ng templates in respect to tabs, but this time for the tab content instead of the titles. So by default, the content for a tab is loaded when the page loads, 
and in our example that has a minimal impact because it's just some plain text. But if we do want to lazy load the contents of a tab, we can wrap it in an ng template and use the mat tab content directive. So before we make any changes, let's just do a small experiment. So back in the browser, let's open up the developer tools and let's run a quick load profile for the tabs as they are now. So the numbers will vary slightly between devices and even between page loads on the same device, but it should still give us some useful data. So for me here, the DOM content loaded event fires around the 1000 milliseconds. So that's this blue line here, DOM content loaded, and it's actually at 915 milliseconds. And the load event fires at around 1600. So 1.61 seconds. So you might want to take a screenshot or something so that you can remember those numbers for comparison. So let's go back to the template now. Probably the most complex component that we've looked at so far is the table component. So let's add that to tab two. Let's get rid of the example paragraph. And let's bring in our app table. So let's go back to the browser again. And let's run another load profile. And it probably won't make a huge amount of difference. The DOM content loaded. This one fired at 922 and the load event fired at 1.59. So it's a very similar numbers that we had before. There's no real perceivable change. The first paint is likely to be later though. So we can see that the first paint in the screenshot is before the DOM content loaded. A few, few kind of milliseconds there, that's probably around the, the 700 mark. And in the latest one, we can see that the first pane actually happens after, after this DOM content loaded event. So just bear that in mind. So now let's use the ng template to lazy load the content for tab two. So now back in the browser again, we shouldn't see any real difference, but let's run another profile. It looks pretty much identical to before. I'm just gonna hard refresh and just make sure it's running the latest code. And let's run another profile. So we can see again that the numbers haven't really changed considerably. We can see the first paint now is back to happening just before the DOM content loaded event. And let's just look at the elements in the tab now. So we should have a number of tab bodies in here, and these are for each of the different tabs. And we can see that the second one for tab two is empty. So tab one has its content loaded here, but tab, tab two doesn't. And now if we actually open up tab two, then we get our table, and we should find that the second tab now has some content and it contains our app table. So that's how you lazy load some tab content. So the profiling wasn't really extremely illustrative. If we were to run that a few more times, you might see some, some differences there, especially between the where we're loading the tab 
a page load and then versus where we're lazy loading it. And depending on the content that's actually within the tab, that can make a huge amount of difference. So if the content for a tab is especially complex, then we can lazy load it so that it doesn't impact the initial page load performance. So that can be a really useful thing to do, depending on the complexity of the content in your tabs. So as I mentioned earlier, the API for tabs is quite large. Both the tab group and individual tabs have a number of input and output properties. But the map tab label and map tab content directives also have properties as well. So by default, the first tab is selected when the page loads. If we want to change that, we can use the selected index property of the tab, and we add that to the tab group container. So just like an array, the tabs are zero based. So tab number one has an index of zero, tab number two has an index of one, and so on and so forth. So when we go back to the browser again, and we can see that by default, tab two is now displayed when the page loads. By default, the tab headers are along the top, but we can change that and we can specify that they should be displayed below the tab content instead. We do that using the header position input property again on the tab group. And now we find the tabs are along the bottom instead. They should work in exactly the same way. So we still get this useful tab navigation when the screen is too small. They should function in exactly the same way. They're just displayed somewhere different this time. Probably the most common thing that we'll want to do is react to a tab being changed. We can do this easily using the selected tab change output event on the tab group. So let's add this method now to the component class. The handle tab change handler is passed a mat tab change event object, and this gives us information about the tab change. And let's just log this event out to the console. So now let's switch back to tab one. And we see this map tab change event object now in the console. And we can see the index of the tab that was selected. That's in the index property. And we also get a reference to the tab itself. And we can see that this has a number of properties as well. We can tell whether the tab is active. Obviously we know it's active because it's just been selected. We get the position property, and that tells us the position of the active tab within the tab group. So we're on the first tab, so that is at position zero. And we also get this origin property, and that tells us the position of the tab relative to the default selected tab. So we went from the second tab to the first tab, so the value of this property is minus one. If we go now to tab five, we can see that the origin now says four. And that's because this tab is now four tabs away from the tab that we were on previously. So this can be useful to work out where the tab is in relation to a tab that was previously selected. So in this lesson, we learned about the tabs component and we saw how we can implement one easily just by using the various tab directive elements. We saw how to create the tab group using markup and how to add rich labels that contain markup instead of plain text using an ng template. And we also saw how we can lazy load tabs using another ng template in the content area for a tab. We had a quick look at the API to see some of the configurable properties that we can set. And we looked at the selected tab change output event that we can hook into, which will be fired whenever the selected tab changes. Thanks for watching.